Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to talk about different tuning frequencies, different pitches that are used to tune your music to or to listen to music in. This is Pasha808, musician, artist, singer-songwriter, guitarist, producer, and sound researcher. Gonna give you the scoop on these frequencies. So make sure you're tuning to the right frequency in life and in music. And the main ones are 256, 432, 440, 444, and 528. I'm going to start with 256 and 432. They're interrelated. They're interrelated because they're part of the same system, especially if you tune to just tuning or Pythagorean tuning. This guitar is an equal temper tuning, so it's as close as it can get to C at 256. And I'll explain why 256 is important. It's a binary number. I'll go into detail about that later on. Here's a chord A major at 432. C major C four forty four A C, 528. Harmonics. Harmonics. So basically, right now, as you probably already know, the world standard tuning pitch is 440, A at 440, which is 8 hertz higher than 432. So all manufacturers of instruments, they decided after World War II that they're going to manufacture all instruments at the pitch of 440 hertz. So this note right here, right now is at 432, but manufacturers make it at 440. So it's higher up. Before the standardization of music pitch and musical instruments, there was no standard pitch. Musicians were using different concert pitches, different tuning pitches. Some used 431, some used 430, some went to 435, some used 432. Most of them were lower than 440, which is now a standard meaning that they were more calm sound because when you raise up the pitch when you raise up the frequency it's going to be more tense right so if i'm if i'm bending a string see I, I just made it more tense there was a push to make 432 standard pitch by some really uh, well-known and talented and experienced musician and scientist a couple hundred years ago but that didn't go through and this is where we're at we can still use 432 if we have a stringed instrument or if we have a piano and we can retune it to 432 so 432 is the more natural more calm and most importantly it interrelates with 256 okay so again 440, on the other hand, is a relatively recent invention. There's no scientific basis behind it. 432 and 256 are known as the scientific pitch. They're also known as the philosopher's pitch. And they're also known as natural tuning. And the reason why it's called scientific pitch is because as far as we can tell, 
from factual historical records 256 and 432 which are interrelated when you're in just tuning or Pythagorean tuning they were discovered through scientific experiments hence scientific pitch by a very well-known and experienced scientist Xavier who worked for the royal family he was not a musician he coined the term acoustics so I'm playing an acoustic guitar he coined the term acoustics so he is huge but you probably never heard of him so I did all this research to really find out what's going on because there's a lot of misinformation about 432 and so forth I wanted to get down to the factual historical evidence so Xavier discovered that 432 is the most harmonious frequency based on his sound experiments he actually hired musicians because he was not really a musician himself he hired musicians or had musician volunteers to test out his experiments and he decided remember he's the scientist of sound he's a sound researcher working for the royal family he concluded that 256 are the most harmonious numbers for music everything starts from a single pitch no matter what tuning system you're using whether you're using just tuning, Pythagorean tuning, or equal temper tuning, it all starts with a single note from which every note is configured. Tuning pitch is so important because it all starts with a single note and then from that everything else is determined. Relative to 440, 432 is 8 hertz lower. 444 and 528 are interrelated and they go even higher. The reason why 256 is significant other than that it relates to 432 is that 256 follows binary number pattern. Okay, Binary num number pattern is significant because if you take any number from 1 you double that number every single time and that's what a binary number is. So for example starting at 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. See how I'm doubling every number? That's a binary number pattern. It follows the laws of mathematics. So it's very scientific and it's ingrained in the universe. Okay, because math is very uh, universally ingrained and it interrelates with music and music pitches and that's why it's important to use the right pitch and you want to use the pitch that has some kind of basis in terms of universal laws of science so binary numbers are also used in computers remember when the video games were coming out it was 16-bit then it was 32 when, when they were making better and better games it kept doubling 64, 128-bit and so forth computers did the same thing when the computers first started c coming out it was written in the basic uh, language computer language um, and one of the first models was 128 okay then it was 256 and so forth so binary numbers are the basis and 432 is part of that family part of that tuning so that's why it's important so what is 440 440 is a global standard pitch which the manufacturers, not scientists, manufacturers of music instruments as well as certain other organizations, supposedly the Rockefeller Foundation, the Nazi Germany Party uh, and so forth, decided to standardize pitch because before it was different pitches. When they decided to standardize pitch so that all music instruments are tuned to the same reference pitch, they decided on 440 even though historically most of the pitches that were used in concerts and by musicians they varied but they were usually a lot less than 440 and it's a higher more tense pitch however some really famous musicians like Bob Marley, Jimi Hendrix, Sade, um, The Beatles, Pink Floyd they have used uh, 432 Hertz tuning because back in the 70s they already knew about this so it's 8 Hertz more tense 
And that's a very small difference when you compare the two, but it is significant because if you research how the brain operates, the brain oscillates on frequencies too, called the brain waves. And you can actually entrain your brain, make it follow sound frequencies. That's where binaural beats come in. When you're asleep, your brain is between one and about eight hertz. It varies depending on your stage of sleep. You know, alpha, delta, beta uh, sleep patterns and brain frequencies. So th those are really small numbers and they're in hertz as well. Hertz are cycles per second. Okay, so your brain oscillates at between one and about maybe eight hertz frequency when you sleep, when you meditate, it's about, you know, about the same, maybe between eight and ten. When you're awake, and when you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this, right? When you're fully awake and active, your brain oscillation, your brain frequency goes up, okay? Into like 12 hertz and above. When you're stressed out, it goes into even higher frequency mode. Your brain does like 18 hertz, maybe 20 hertz and above, 30, 40. That's when you start panicking, right? Your brain starts to over, um, over oscillating. So, and, and that, that's why music, you know, it's important because music can and it does entrain your brain to follow whatever sounds you're hearing. You know when you hear like ambulance and it's a really high like annoying sound but everybody hears it and it's a really high pitched but it's a stressful sound, right? Well, same thing with music, except music is more complicated than just a siren because it's a combination of different tones and modalities. So it's important. That's why it all starts at what frequency are you tuning your instrument to? What frequency are you, is your music in? What frequency of music are you listening to? Okay, because um, when the frequency is high, like 440, which is 8 hertz, higher than 432, it creates, at least subliminally, a state of worry, disharmony, anxiety, so forth, because it's a higher frequency, okay? And um, vice versa, when you're listening to a lower pitch sound, especially when it's aligned with actual principles of the universe, like binary numbers, that's when you're more um, in harmony, okay? so. 440, back to 440. To this day, most musicians, unfortunately, use it. They don't even know that there are alternatives, okay? Because this information is being suppressed. I made videos about shadow banning of terms like uh, 432 hertz, hertz, binaural beats, hypnosis. You can check that out. Subliminal, you can check that out in my other videos. But that kind of information is being shadow banned, even though it's not offensive, right? This is the future of music evolution we're talking about here and the history of it, which is really important, I think. In any case, 440 sounds brighter, more tense. Doesn't sound too bad. I mean, we're all used to it. We grew up listening to all music being tuned to 440 hertz frequency, okay? So we're used to it for the most part. So we don't know any better, right? Well, now we do because there are alternatives and that's why I'm making this video. 440, okay, that's A. So when you go to C, remember how C becomes 256 when you're in 432? Well, in 440, it's not even close to 256. And that's an issue because you want to be close to that binary pattern. Anyway, so that's 440, world standard, unfortunately. Fortunately, we can change it if you have a string instrument, if you have a piano, if you have a brass instrument, it would have to be post-production, okay, because brass instrument, it's already set in form. String instruments, you can change pitches and stuff like that. 444, 444, not 666, 444, and 528. If you've been doing your music research, you've probably heard about 528 hertz. The love frequency. I personally don't use it, but I know it's out there. 
I don't discriminate against frequencies. Um, you know, I like to investigate frequencies. And that's why I have videos that tell you how to tune to 528 if you want to. I personally don't do it. That's, that's my choice. You know, if you want to choose to tune to 528 and 444, you're free to do so. So here's the scoop on 444 and 528. I just tuned it to 444 hoping I'm not gonna snap a guitar string because it's even going higher in frequency so the strings are becoming even more tense. So the reason why we're tuning to 444 is to get to C at 528 because they're interrelated just like 432 and 256 are interrelated. Your A is going to be at 444, your C is going to be at 528. So let's hear what it sounds like and I hope the strings don't break. A major. So it sounds even more brighter than 440, more tense. 528, C. I mean, it doesn't sound too bad, right? Because all the strings are in tune, they are in harmony with one another. It's not like my guitar is out of tune, so it sounds okay. But everything um, in life and in music is discovered or understood through comparison, okay? If you have nothing to compare it to, then that's the only thing you know. But in our case, when it comes to music frequencies, we have alternatives to compare it to. So we have the 432 and the 256. We have the 440, 528 and 444. So we can compare the three of them back to back and decide for ourselves what frequency do we want to listen to? What frequency do we want to play or produce music in? Everyone has a choice. Everybody can choose for themselves based on their research, based on their what their ears like, based on what their brain likes to hear, right? So that's what it's all about. So when uh, the issue comes of shadow sensor, shadow banning and shadow censoring hertz or any alternative frequencies by the mainstream uh, music distributor, distributors, etc. To me that's like a red flag. Why are they trying to suppress that information. Why shouldn't have the people access to such research-based and harmless thing like music frequencies, right? I think they don't want people to have alternatives because they're afraid that if people have alternatives they will choose those alternatives because those alternatives are better and that's why I've been a 432 Hertz musician now for almost a decade releasing multiple albums with that. You can check out my music at Pasha808.com and thank you for tuning in and I do hope you're tuning to the right frequency. Okay? And now I'm gonna play music back to back in the three different frequency modes. 432, here we go. Four forty four slash five twenty eight. 